And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. I believe the Lord is doing a great work in our lives. And this morning, again, more glory will be added to us. Every time you come into God's presence, the glory of God on your life increases. And so today, God will shift us yet to another level by His Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the privilege. We love you. We honor you. We ask that you speak to our spirits, strengthen our understanding, and cause us to walk in the fullness of the revelation of your word, that our lives will become blessings eternal. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated because of our time. Hallelujah. Praise God. We started a discussion yesterday. And... Um, I thank the Lord for the team of this conference, betting the new. And like I told us yesterday, it's important for us to progressively and continually explore new frontiers in the spirit. The reason is because the possibilities embedded in us is unlimited. I told us yesterday you have a human side. And you also have a divine side. And your divine side is divine indeed. In fact, Paul speaking in Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 and 27, he said, this is the mystery of the age. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um, that's a very deep statement. If you take time to examine it carefully, you know, man is not the only age in the creations of God. Before God created man, he had created the angelic realm. Angels were created before us. And if you study the angelic order, they are of different strata, they are of different ranking. In heaven, when John went to heaven, he said, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. He said, who is able to open the book and to lose the seals? He said, no man was found worthy to open the book neither to lose the seal. That's Revelation 5. And he said, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book. But he said something striking. He said, I saw a strong angel. And why John was lamenting in heaven, the strong angel did not have understanding. And suddenly he said, one of the elders came to me and said, weep not. He said, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he had prevailed. So what a strong angel could not discern in the future was the past of an elder in heaven. So the ranking of beings in heaven are different. Something else is a breaking news to a creature in heaven and that thing that is a breaking news to a creature in heaven is a past to another creature in heaven because they are in different ages and they are in different order. What is a past for an elder in heaven is a breaking news for a strong angel in heaven. And John was interacting with all of these dimensions because there are different ages in the spirit. When you get into heaven, you can meet the end at the beginning because it's rumpled. It's not governed by time. There's no chronological reality governing that reality. And so you can touch the end before the beginning and you can enter the beginning even after the end. So all of these possibilities are there. And the reason is because different realities are weaved into that realm. Now, when God finished all of those possibilities, he decided to create the age of man. And Paul was talking to us in Colossians, he said, the mystery that governs the age of man. He didn't have the time to talk to us about the angelic mysteries. But if you study the angelic realm carefully, you will discover that what governs the angelic realm is service. That's why they are called angels. They are high commissioners. And so an angel is powerful to the degree of his service. If you don't serve in that realm, you don't have a place. And if you violate the law of service, you become a rebel. And you'll be kicked out from the mountains of God. But when, John, when Paul began to speak to us about the age of man, he said the mystery of our age is intimacy. Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
So anything not born out of intimacy is not recognized in the realm of God. You can preach from your intelligence. God will not veto it. You can give out of pride. God will not veto it. Until it is born from the place of intimacy, it will not pass the test of God. So when he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory, he is talking about the core of your being. And so because of that reality, our essence is not just physical. Our essence is also divine. That means you can choose to tap into the unlimited resources of Christ until you become exactly like Christ. And so we started teaching yesterday and said, betting the new has to do with the depths of Christ you can explore part time. If you are not exploring depths in Christ, you are actually not touching the new. You are just reshuffling things that already are. So a man who steps into the new, steps into new frontiers and new depths in Christ. And in order to give us understanding, I touched two aspects of these realities. And the first aspect I touched was the aspect of glory. I said we are not just earthly beings. There is a glory locked up on our inside. The Bible said, this glory is hid in 18 vessels. There is a glory locked up on our inside. And so every time we transit to higher realms of glory, we have entered new dimensions. And our possibilities will be defined based on the level of glory we command per time. A pastor is superior in rank to another pastor, not necessarily because he is more popular, not necessarily because he has more money, it's actually a function of the level of glory he's walking in. A believer is more relevant to God than another believer, not necessarily because he was born again before that believer. It all has to do with the economy of glory available to you per time. And I told us these possibilities are not esoteric realities. We saw men who touched them in scriptures. From Genesis 33, 29 and 30, we saw that Moses interacted with the glory of God until his literal face began to shine. We saw the same reality in the life of Jesus in Matthew 17, verse 2 and 3, that as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. The glory literally began to glow through him. We saw the same in the life of Stephen in Acts chapter 6, verse 15. The Bible said, as he lifted his face, they saw him and his countenance was like an angel. So men touch this glory they walked in it and they handled it in fact john speaking in john chapter one first john chapter one verse one and two he said that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen and which we have handled of the word of life that is what we have come to commit to you so men have handled these realities and the more of it they handle the more dimensions of god they are able to command and so a man who wants to walk in new realities, I told you yesterday, does not necessarily need to increase in money. He needs to increase in glory. If you increase in glory, money can become a byproduct. Wisdom can become a byproduct. Power can become a byproduct. But by all means, let layers of glory be added unto you from one level to another level. That's why the Bible said, we are with open faces, beholding as in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are metamorphosed so when a man touches the glory beyond a possession he becomes he said we are metamorphosed from one level of glory to another level of glory there is a level of glory that commands wisdom enough to address 10 people there's a level of glory that commands wisdom to address a thousand people there's a level of glory that commands wisdom to address a million people so when you see a man walking in a dimension of influence, it's a testimony of the glory that he carries. You can apply all the principles there is in the world as a manager of a company. That company may not grow in influence beyond your locality. You will need a wisdom superior to where you are to be able to diversify that company to a level where it affects a nation. It's not gimmick. It's not luck and chance. It's a deliberate thing. A wealthy man lost two billion dollars in one day and that same evening they found him playing golf and they asked him how are you able to do this you just lost a whooping two billion dollars and he said the money didn't make me i made the money 
if I make the money, I can make it again. So he knows that he's not wealthy by chance. There is something he carries that commands wealth. Take every money from him. Give him another day. He will go out the next day where people are crying that nothing is working. He will step into that place and begin to change things because there is something he knows. And those levels of transformation take place when you begin to interact with glory. That is why I told you yesterday that the glory is not necessarily a face beaming with light. The glory is actually a realm of life. That as you touch glory, you begin to grow from one realm of life to another realm of life. And I gave us six levels of life yesterday. From the animal life to the soulish life to the spirit life which breaks into the righteous life the life of the fear of God and the life of the knowledge of the holy. There are many people walking at different levels of this life depending on the dimension of glory they've seen. The same songs we are all singing, some people are singing this song and the whole world is standing for them. It's not about the lyrics. It's about the glory that is emitted. The same message we are preaching, some persons are preaching it and presidents of nations are listening to them. It's about the glory that is emitted. The more you grow in glory, the more authority you command. The more influence you command. The more wisdom you command. So I said, touching the new or walking in the new is actually a journey in glory. The second thing I spoke about yesterday was intimacy. I said, entering into the new is access to new things in God. Secret things in God. Paul said these things were kept for us before the foundations of the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. And so a man who wants to step into the new must first of all step into the new in the spirit before he sees the byproduct in the natural. You don't step into the new in the natural if you have not stepped into it in the spirit. And so if you want to step into the new in the natural, your intimacy level must increase. Because that's how God designed it. In Deuteronomy 27, 29 verse 29, it said, The secret of the Lord. It said, The secret things belong unto God, but the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. They are things that are revealed. And these things are not revealed to strangers. They are revealed to men who stay in the presence. If you have walked with God for a while, you will discover that every time there is a shift, is because a word came from the Lord. What you will labor for for one year, if God speaks to you in a moment, it can be done. Everything just gets together, and you are wondering why is it so easy? It's not easy. It came under the authority and the majesty of the voice of God. There are many persons. I can tell you these stories upon stories, and I know God's servant has a lot of stories. It's not easy to come to Abuja and get a land and build a structure like this. You can call everybody you know. In fact, I got, I got to a point that I don't call anybody again until God tells me to call him. Because the moment you call somebody, you... I had this year, I just gave it out yesterday. It's a lie. Because if God doesn't touch their heart, you can be blood related, you can be friends for 20 years, he will have that thing, but he will rather keep it because he doesn't know tomorrow. So he, he knows that you have need of this thing. But he's afraid that if he gives it to you, he may need it the next second. So while you are crying and wailing, he will sympathetically <laughs> express his concerns. But he will tell you he's not there. And so I realized the easiest way to get things done is to do it when God speaks. And God speaks in the place of intimacy. When God speaks, he's not just talking to you. He's also talking to the person that should respond. God responds. And so when you see men that create impact consistently, there is a place they are standing in the secret. It is ordinary and simple people that believe things happen by chance. Nothing happened by chance. Everything is deliberately orchestrated, including marriage. It's not a product of beauty. It's a product of the fragrances of favor. And those dimensions come in intimacy. 
That's why you can cook for a man, wash his clothes, and do everything. When it's time for marriage, he relocates to another place. And you are wondering, am I not a good person? You are a wonderful person, but there's no fragrance. When that fragrance comes, he will seek you, he will, he will chase after you, he will marry you, and he will call it a blessing. If you don't tarry in the place of intimacy, your life will be a, a misfortune. You will try everything you can do with your effort, but human effort will fail a thousand times. And so a man who wants to constantly walk in the new must be a man that dwells with God in the secret place. Check the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Adam, the Bible said in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. So he was having continuous intimacy with God. After he fell, the world was to be cracked, wrecked and destroyed. But suddenly, in Genesis 4.26, the Bible said, God gave to Adam a child called Seth in the place of Abel that Cain slew. And he said, Seth gave birth to a child called Enosh. And he said, in those days, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. The world that was about to be destroyed by Cain was reset. And it continued like that. When God saw evil on the face of the earth and he wanted to destroy it in Genesis 6, the Bible said Noah found favor with God. It's in Genesis 8 verse 20 and 22 that we knew what Noah did that provoked that favor. Because the moment he came out of the ark, he said he built an altar unto the Lord. It's always intimacy that provokes preservation. It's always intimacy that begs the new. If there is no intimacy, your life will be at one spot for 30 years. And you will tell people that you are 70 years old, but in reality you are 25. Because you are still working at the experience of 25. At 25 you didn't have a job. At 60 you didn't have a job. At 25 you were struggling to eat. At 60 you are still struggling to eat. At 25 you had no influence to bring people to the kingdom. At 60 you still don't have influence. That means you are growing chronologically, but in, re in relevance you are not growing. So at 60 years old, in reality, you can still be 25 years old. That's why you've been there for the past 30 years. The reason is because you are not reading the scrolls of your destiny. He said to Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet. Jeremiah would have trained to be a priest all his life. Whereas his destiny was the destiny of a prophet. There are many people going in the wrong direction. Because they have not read the scrolls of their destiny. And I tell people, if you are in the wrong direction, speed is not an advantage. Imagine you are supposed to go Lagos and you are heading to, towards Kano. Even if you are on a flight, you are moving in negative. When you reach Kano, Kano becomes a great disadvantage because it's a departure from your destination. This is why intimacy is a channel for betting the new. And those new are dimensions in God that improve the quality of your life in time. This morning, I want to show us the protocol. Mama painted a picture yesterday. I will go and study that one. You know, this spiritual thing, where your knowledge stops, that's where somebody else starts. So, <laughs> so you keep learning and learning and learning. But there are three things I want to talk about this morning. I'll glean a little from what she said and then say a few other things. If you want to do business in glory and if you want to do business in the realms of intimacy, there is something you cannot afford not to have. It's called the energy within. That's what we call stamina. The worst thing that will happen to you is in the day of betting, you lack strength. You lack strength in the day when your destiny is, decide, is being decided. You don't have the stamina to stand. There is a power that men who create impact carry. You may not see them shouting, but when you check them in the spirit, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. When their destiny is to be decided, they can stand there for three days and they will insist betting takes place. They will not move. Isaiah 66 verse 8 the Bible said as soon as Zion travailed 
she brought forth her children that is the stamina we are talking about the ability to groan in the spirit until a betting takes place because bettings are not a gift bettings are a product of travail and you can't understand it until you see a woman put to bed they forget the courtesy they forget the beauty they forget the glamour they forget the coordination when you meet a woman in theater you will know what true womanhood is every other thing you see outside the theater is packaging <laughs> a woman can love diamonds and if she sees diamond she will suddenly begin to walk like a princess wait until she is in the theater give her a box of diamond she will kick it away because at that time focus is 100 percent at that time energy is 100 percent at that time commitment is 100 percent and if you don't have such capacity you can't bring forth the new the bible said elijah in james chapter 5 verse 16 is a man subject to like passion just as we are he said he prayed prayed earnestly that there will be no rain and there was no rain for a period of three and a half years and he told us the principle he said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much dynamic in its working three things of emphasis the first is effectual the second is fervent the third is what he called let me explain the first two if i have time i'll enter the third when you speak of effectual it means a deliberate and well targeted focus the emphasis check the word effectual it means to be accurately targeted so it speaks of focus check the word fervent it means heartfelt that talks about passion and intensity passion and intensity and then you check the word righteous it means right standing that means the kind of prayer that produces the new is a well focused prayer is a highly intense prayer and it's a prayer being prayed from a position of righteousness a right standing with god all of these three is what makes for energy if you study the word for strength or power in the scriptures there are four major words for power the first is dunamis the second is exousia the third is iscus and the fourth is kratos there are other words for power but they are not predominantly used in the new testament you have words like megatos they are there in scripture but the four major words for power is dunamis, exousia, iscus, and kratos. Now, exousia is born out of revelation. When you hear the gospel, you receive the authority to exert it. So, the more revelation you have, the more authority you have. In fact, the Bible said in John chapter 1, from verse 11, He came unto his own, his own knew him not. He said, but as many as received him to them, he gave the exousia, to become the sons of God. So baby Christians have authority. If their revelation grows. In fact the Bible said in Luke 10 19. That when he sent them out. They cast out devils. And they returned to him. And they said all the demons were subject to us. And Jesus prayed. And he said I thank you father. That you have revealed these things to babes. And not to the prudent. That means babes were exercising authority over demons. Because they had a revelation of that power he said you have revealed these things to them so the moment revelation comes authority comes the second type of power is called dunamis dunamis has to do with engagement you can receive exousia through revelation but dunamis has to do with engagement because the word is from the word dynamo and you see a dynamo cannot work except as you provoke it for a while before it launches so a man who functions in exousia is a man that engages power that's why you study Ephesians 3.20 he said God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that is at work on your inside so when you start praying in the Holy Ghost you begin to generate dynamis. that's why the moment they receive the Holy Spirit they started speaking in tongues because the proof of the holy the receipt of the holy spirit is not tongues it's power but that power is activated through tongues so for them to walk that power they must have to speak in tongues praise god so as they spoke in tongues they built that power but those two dimensions of power are not the power that establishes your destiny 
the power that establishes your destiny is Iskos and Kratos. That's why in Ephesians 6 10, he said, Be strong in the Lord. Because there are oppositions to destiny. For you to bet the new, remember, you have to travel. That means you have to break every opposition that stands in your way. So you need more than revelation and few minutes of speaking in tongues. You need stamina. That's why Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the issues of your kratos so that you are able to take all the armor of God and stand in the day of trouble. That means the men who stand, the men who travel, the power they carry is not exousia. The power they carry is not dynamis. It's Iskus and Kratos. Now, what is Iskus? Iskus is... Am I using too many? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound funny. <laughs> Pardon me. I'm trying to explain something. I'm trying to explain. <laughs> Iskus. Listen. Iskus is synergistic power. Why Kratos is power in motion for example this bob you are seeing is kratos before the gen came up it was dunamis as you own the gen and the gen started working and mechanical power was converted to electrical power and you can see it in this bob this one is called kratos this is what helps you to appreciate this hall this sound you are hearing is called kratos this is no longer dunamis dunamis is the energy working in the generator but what you are applying is Kratos. And so if you want to appreciate sound, you need Kratos. If you want electric bulb, you need Kratos. So that's what Paul was saying. But for you to generate Kratos, you must be consistent. So Kratos is not just a one-time thing. A Kratos is actually the ability to stay until the product begins to appear. This is why you need stamina. You can have dynamics and pray in tongues. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. After one hour you are charged, you go to a service and that day service will be powerful. But for you to have powerful service consistently, you must pray in tongues every day. So there is a man who has energy to pray in tongues for five hours and do a mighty feat in one day. He, can, he wants to go for a contract or for an interview. Pa, pa, pa. When he finishes, he feels inspired and he goes and pass the interview. For you to be the best on the job, you need to maintain that energy. That maintenance invokes consistency. So, Kratos is consistency dimension of power. That is what we call stamina. And for you to build Kratos, you must make up your mind to stay. That ability to stay is what we call Kratos. And that ability is not mental. It is to put your trust in God. That's why I was so blessed when Pastor Opie said it yesterday. He said, they that trust in the Lord, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. That means consistency in the spirit is trust. And a man who has not built trust in God can never bet the new. Because he won't have the energy to bring forth. I can tell you more than 80% of believers today are not consistent in any spiritual things. Be it studying of the scripture or praying or fasting, there's no consistency. That's why when they are supposed to bet new dimension, they found themselves wanting. Because in the day of betting, there's no strength. The reason is because they don't know Kratos. Bruce Lee said something. He said, I respect a man who can punch one blow for a thousand days more than a man who can punch a thousand blows in one day. Consistency is superior to longevity. You can do something for 10 hours, but you don't know it. You can do something for 30 hours, you don't know it. But if you do it every day, no matter how small, you build stamina. Why am I saying this? Some people want to succeed in life. They think it's just the 30 hours prayer they went to have in the retreat. That is beautiful. But for you to succeed in life, you need to study a verse of scripture every day. You need to pray in tongues every day for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, for 30 minutes. If you begin to do that, you will be shocked that the day your destiny is demanded, strength will just come from nowhere because you have built yourself like Mount Zion. This is why many fail in life. They don't have Kratos in their spirit. It's beyond coming for a revival meeting. You hear a powerful message. That day you wept and throughout that night you prayed. That is beautiful. When you stand up, create a program. Create a study program. 
create a prayer program because the energy you need for your destiny is not momentary it's a stamina that your spirit must be used to you don't want to go for olympics and you run for one week and you say you win go and find out what these guys do every morning they are in the field running sometimes when they are done running they travel from america to kenya because they want to learn how to run on highlands and they will be there for months because they know winning is not just the, the 15 minutes race in fact some race is, is in seconds 100 meters is in nine seconds and they will train for one year to run for nine seconds because they know that nine seconds is a kairos moment but it will require stamina to bet it you want to bet the new you need to be built your legs will become like a camel that strength many don't have it when you build that strength something begins to happen to you there is a power that decimates the flesh that is activated on your inside paul knew that technology he said i struggled with the flesh i discovered i was a wretched man but when he entered romans chapter 8 verse 2 he said what the law could not do he said the spirit of life that is in christ jesus set me free from the law of sin and death the law of sin and death is a power of flesh and paul learned how to decimate it by aligning with the holy spirit consistently something happened in verse 11 he said that same power that raised jesus from the dead mortified the more you start trusting the holy ghost and spending time with him every day every day you will discover that a power begins to build up on your inside that power swallows up your weaknesses and so when you come out you become a new version of yourself that your new version is what will bring deliverance to jacob because the word used in romans 8 verse 2 is the same word used in romans 8 19 creation cannot be delivered from the bondage of corruption except men who have built stamina shows up it's beyond coming to church one day and shouting there are no strong men on the scene anymore there are no men with stamina if we change this service now and say let's pray to evening some will sleep and wake up 10 times some will go out and come back they are not looking for anything they just want to see what the sun looks like today maybe the color of the sun has changed to green so they want to be sure if the color is still the same they are just looking for what to distract them they will touch their phone if the phone gets off they will go and they will trek to the supermarket up there and buy pure water and they will not drink the water they will come and keep it on them because flesh will go on rampage there's no stamina in their spirit but a man who prays every day 30 minutes 40 minutes one hour when you say those things ah, that's when you will discover that muscles are building have you seen somebody who goes to the gym daily sometimes after four months you have not seen anything but you are just consistent something is building on the inside something is building when you do it for eight months suddenly you wear your suit you discover it's tight what is happening the chest is beginning to reform and after two years when you stand anybody that sees you will know that there's something new here this is not the man i used to know it is called kratos the ability in trust to keep building little by little every day that's what brings the new the new does not appear by a sudden explosion the new appears by a daily increment little and insignificant but cumulatively undeniable you want to see the new you must be consistent and that consistency is what we call strength you build it on a daily basis many people never have consistency on any part of their lives they are just looking for somebody to inspire them to fascinate them and so when they are down they run to somebody that will inspire them on a particular thing and they will carry that inspiration for one week and they will dump it you will never be established in anything trust me nothing in this life you want to find out if your life can bet the new go and sit down and study yourself find out what have i done consistently in the last one year if there's nothing you have done consistently in the one, last one year you're on your highway to failure no matter the prophecies and impartation nothing can be committed to you because you don't have stamina 
I read about Billy Graham. He said he reads three Psalms and one proverb every day for inspiration. And he was relevant for more than 68 years preaching the gospel of salvation. No miracles, no signs and wonders, no spectacular English, no deep revelation. His final crusade, they had overflow in 18 stadia. He was in one stadium, 17 other stadiums were packed for a man who is preaching the cross. John 3, 16. And he did it for 68 years. In fact, on one occasion, while he was preaching, a deaf ear opened. And his followers were so excited and said, this thing happening with our robots have started happening with us. They wanted to take the testimony. They have been waiting for it. And he heard them. Take it away. That's a distraction to my message. The, the miracles that people are falsifying now. The man knew what stamina could bet. And so he was so sure. He was so sure. How can you be packing stadiums in different nations of the world? By preaching John 3.16. It's not the spe the, how spectacular the message is. It's not the miracle. It's the power within. Your own power within can generate miracles. Your own power within can generate wisdom. Your own power within can generate influence. People will not see it. But when you show up, a nation will be shut down. When he died, they gave him the honor they give American presidents that die on their throne. There were spectacular preachers in the U.S. who were never honored like that. But he had something with God. Every day, he looked upon him. And he said they looked at him and their faces were radiant. And they were not ashamed. I tell you something. Our generation is pursuing quick fix and spectacular things. That's not the way to, to, to glory. The way to glory is slow and steady. But you keep going. It took Moses 40 days to climb Sinai. And after he ascended Sinai, he waited for 6 days for the glory to descend. If you are in a rush, you will never see the glory. Men who have stamina, they may not have instant speed, but they know they will get there. And when they get there, it will be the right time. And so on a daily basis, they keep building. They keep building. They keep building. Sometimes it looks so infinitesimal that yourself will not feel it. You are done praying for 30 minutes. You didn't sense the anointing. You didn't see an angel. But every day, 30 minutes. Every day, 30 minutes. Every day, 30 minutes. After 8 months, you will walk into your bedroom. An angel will sit there. After 3 months, you will carry a book. You will see what others are not seeing. After 3 months, you walk through a place. And you will see business ideas that people are not seeing. And you are wondering, when did I become so wise? You were climbing a staircase. It was small, but you were climbing. When you are done climbing 10, 15, and you look back, you will discover that you are on an elevated platform. Somebody else wants to come and jump 15 staircases at the same time. And he keeps falling again and again. But the man is just climbing one step at a time. And as he's going, after a while, he has moved so far that his reality is completely different. It's called stamina. If you don't have it, you can never bet the new. Your life is not a failure. You have not just found your path and you have not stayed there consistently. Stay there for five years and see what becomes of you. Stay there for ten years and see what becomes of you. A time will come, you will not just be doing well. You will become the mentor of every other person walking that path because you know all the look and cranny. First, is stamina. We lack men of stamina. In one year, they've tried seven different things. Because there's no stamina. There's no stamina. There's no stamina. If you will build stamina, your life will become an endless stream of possibilities. Ask those who are excelling today. They spend time on what they are doing. There were times when it looked as if they were complete failures. They stayed there. There were times when men ridiculed them. They stayed there. As they kept building, improving on it, researching on it, developing, suddenly, something exploded and it became a new thing. Did you not read the story of Thomas Edison? Failed again and again and again and again and again. But when he eventually got it, he became a wonder to his generation. You need stamina in the spirit. 
if that wisdom will come to you if that influence will come to you if that favor will come to you if that power will come to you you need stamina we are too inconsistent that's why nothing is entrusted to us the first protocol of betting the new is stamina in the spirit you are mighty on your truth You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your truth. You know, when I started praying for the sick, I will feel so charged in my spirit. And I'll say, no, today is the day. I will enter the hospital. Sometimes I'll be making decrees. Nurses will come and say, no, no, no. Go. Because I felt it's in shouting. I will shout. When I finish, not one person will be healed. Not one. I'm not even saying, they will not even tell you they are feeling better. Somebody is on admission. Will he impress you? <laughs> when I did shouting for a while, I discovered, no, shouting was not working. I now read about Kenehagin, so I carry scriptures. And now I equip myself with scriptures. When I come, I will read the scripture to the people. I will read it, read it, read it. Because Kenehagin will read scriptures to people and they will get healed. I became a reader. I was gone reading. Nobody was healed. The Holy Ghost now told me, it's not the momentary activity. Stay here for a while. Stay here. Stay here. And when I start with the Holy Spirit, a point comes. I want to go out. There will be a song in my spirit. The song has nothing to do with the prayer I'm going for. As I start singing the song, suddenly the anointing begins to move. And I will go there with that song. A preacher, I'm not a psalmist. But I will show up with that song. And that song will begin to work wonders. Another time I'm going out, I want to carry the song. Because the last time the song worked wonders, the Holy Ghost will... <laughs> It's not the song that carries the power. The Holy Ghost will give me one scripture. And I'll carry that one scripture and go out. I will not quote five. With that one scripture, the deaf will hear. With that one scripture, the blind will see. What is going on here? He said, as you tarried more, we started committing things to you. We don't give things to strangers. When you run around, you will run the way you, you will go the way you came. But when you stay for a while, we will begin to commit things to you. The oracles of God. And the point will come, the more you stay there, the more you will start distrusting yourself and start trusting God. That's why Paul said, we are the circumcision. That worship God in the spirit, rejoicing in Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. So my job is to stay with God. I will study, I will pray. When I'm done, I will now stay there. When I'm done with what I'm doing, then the oracles begin to come. You have studied, you have prayed, but you, are, you need to wait. When you wait, then he will whisper into your spirit. Those things that come from his realm is what gives you strength. It's what gives you strength. Too many can't tarry. There's no stamina. That's why they are not seeing new things. What somebody else is doing is good. It is designed to inspire you. But what was written concerning you is unique. And you have to find it in the spirit. And the way to find it is to wait until he talks. When he talks, ah! You will discover that you are invincible. But your invincibility will not be in yourself. It will anchor on the frequencies you are receiving. Those frequencies. Those frequencies. And so when you master this, your strength will become your reliance on it. This is the first protocol of betting the new. I tried a lot of things. Ah! If I give you the list of men I, I went to to lay hands on me, until one day I heard Bishop Oedeko say, even if they pour a drum of oil, <laughs> I say, what have I been doing? It's not a waste, but it will be a seed in your spirit. That's why Paul said, fan to flame the gift of God that was deposited in you by the laying on of my hands. So we as pastors, we will keep decreeing over you, we will keep prophesying, we will keep laying hands on you, but on your own part. You have to go and sit in the presence so that those things can germinate. There's a wisdom in your spirit that needs to come alive. But you have not brought it under the right atmosphere. 
there's a favor in your spirit that will open any door but you have not brought it under the right atmosphere there is an authority you carry that should shape your generation you have not brought it under the right atmosphere you are too in a hurry wait in the presence men who change things are men of stamina he said they renew their strength they mount up with wings like the eagles he said when they run they don't faint when they walk they are not weary the reason is because they have entered their divine side did you not read isaiah 40 verse 28 he said even the youth shall faint he said the young men shall utterly fall now he took the youth because among the human species the strongest are the youth but he wanted to show you a contrast between man and god he said the youth will fail they will faint and they will utterly fall he said but have you not heard about god he said he does not get weary that means god compared to man is strength compared to weakness so the greatest strength of a man is weakness before god he said but they that wait upon the lord they create a bridge they substitute their weakness for the strength of the divine and so when they come out it doesn't matter if they are young or old it doesn't matter if they are educated or not educated what they are working with now is an economy beyond them and so you find a man who didn't go to the university yet he is one of the strongest men in the econo in the economy and then you are wondering what is this when i heard the story of cosmos maduka i said what what but there's a wisdom superior to what he read in a book I don't have time this morning to dig so deep but I came to tell you when you find where your stronghold is stay there for some of you he's singing anytime the Holy Ghost wants to keep you he begins to bring songs you find yourself washing and you are singing for three hours that means your channel to strength is song. So what you do is arrange the playlist. Go and lock the door. Sit there and be singing until the Holy Ghost comes. If you need to sing for two hours every day, maintain that routine. After six months, you will discover it was not a song. It was a door. And when you stay there for a long, that door will open and you will enter wisdom. You will enter favor. You will enter power. People will ask you, how did you do it? Even you will not know. You may want to package yourself and appear like a man in charge. It's a lie. Everything happening was given. You know, sometimes when we show up, I came from a crusade yesterday. When I'm entering the crusade ground, I wear white suit with white shoe. So when I'm coming, I'm coming like an apostle. The people will see me and say, my God, my God, my God. They don't know. I've entered my stronghold. So I know anybody who stays there, he will meet him in public. If you stay in the hiding, he will meet you in public. I know I've stayed there. And so when I come, I'm scanning. I'm scanning. Sometimes when we are singing, it's not because we love the song. We are checking and asking for mercy. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And when he shows up, you become like Mount Zion. But if you don't tarry in the present, you can't know the technology. You will see somebody in white suit because he said, you are healed. You too go and wear white suit and say you are healed. The person will die. He, has, he knows the frequency. He has an antenna. He has trained himself. Because while he's in the present, David said, my God. He said, you teach, he teaches my hands to fight and my fingers to war. So when he's wielding, there's a movement. There's a movement. He mastered it in the presence. You have not watched him he said the things i do are the things i watch my father do you stay there you know the dynamics of the realm people are strangers to the move of god and they want to come to the public and create a show it's a waste of time whichever part you find hold on to it some of you is scriptures the more you are reading scriptures the more your spirit is charging create a routine sit there some of you is tongues when you are tonguing you discover you move from your divine your natural element to your divine element spend time every day that is your stronghold your stronghold is not a door shut it's a dimension you found in the spirit 
And if it is a song, enter that song until you are lost in it. If it's scriptures, enter the scriptures until you are lost. If it's prayer, enter prayer until you are lost. If they want to find you, they should excavate a thousand scripture before they find you. If they want to find you, they should excavate a thousand prayer before they find you. Because you have tarried there too long, you have lost your identity. When you show up, it's God that shows up. We need stamina in our generation. Too many things are going wrong. And nobody can stand and say, restore. 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 In the days of old, some could sit in one place for 40 days. When I read about Ezekiel, I told myself, I may never be a prophet until I leave this world. God came to him and said, lie on one side and intercede for Israel and the man laid on one side for 390 days and when it was done God came back and said turn to the other side and intercede for Judah and the man laid there for 40 days so Ezekiel stayed on one spot for 430 days that's more than one year what stamina and the point came ezekiel literally became invincible the bible said when god wants to walk with ezekiel ezekiel started having out of body experiences naturally ezekiel can be in his room and come for service you will shake him talk to him you will think you are talking to him the man had learned something in the spirit he could split himself he said the spirit of the lord took me by the lock of my hair he started traveling by the wind of the spirit because the more you stay the faster you become that's why i said they that wait they start running that means speed in the spirit is waiting in the natural you need to run to add speed but in the spirit you wait the more you wait the faster you become and people are wondering who are you he said as the wind blow it that list us not from whence it cometh or where it goes he says who are they that are born by the spirit of god if your boss understands you, it means you are not waiting. That's why they can victimize you. Every day they should see a new dimension because you are coming from different realms. You don't know who we are. We are strange creatures. That's why Paul could not give us a name. He said you are a new creature because you can become anything you want to be. Anything you see in God, you can model it. You become like a theater that reveals the multifaceted dimensions of God. So no man should be weak who is in Christ Jesus. No man who is in Christ Jesus should be defeated. If you find defeated people, they don't wait. They are still operating at the realms of the mind. There are six realms of life. As much as it's within your power, don't operate in the first two realms. The first two realms is feeling oriented, is the flesh. The second realm is soul oriented, is facts and information a man who studied better than you will subdue you and you think you went to harvard there's somebody else who doubled harvard and oxford you have a master's degree somebody has three phds and so in addition to your earthly endeavors add the spiritual edge study as much as you can but add the spiritual edge that spiritual edge is what defines you that's why you can sit among those who are better than you, but they can't tell why you are ahead. I told my people, I said, when men are applying principles, all of us will apply principles. When men are applying diligence, all of us will apply diligence. When men are applying hard work, all of us will apply hard work. But when diligence doesn't work, we will now reverse and apply what men don't have. You know, the world think we are men. We are not men. We are a new creature. We are both God and man. God is in my, on, the, on my inside. God is on your inside. And so when you do what men do and it doesn't work, leave men and join God. Because you can choose to be in the league of men, you can also choose to be in the league of God. So when the operations of men fail, join the operations of God. He said, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men but unto God. He said, in the natural, he doesn't make sense. How be it in the spirit, he altered mysteries. And so when diligence doesn't work, I substitute it with mysteries. 
when hard work fails to work i substitute it with mysteries because i have other possibilities on my inside you are not ordinary there is something in you that your generation is looking for and if you must bet it you must build stamina that thing that takes you away from god's presence is taking you away from your destiny and so next time when it comes fight it that's what peter called suffering in the flesh in first peter chapter 4 verse 1 he said him that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sinning the ability to mortify paul said in first corinthians 9 27 i beat my body i subdue it there were times while seeking god i disconnected every electronic device in my house i removed the wires remove everything and dump them somewhere because those things at those times had become distractions there are times when i receive information that i need from there but there are times when they become too loud for my spirit there are times when i remove my sim card it's not even in the phone before i put it on silent i remove the sim card and put it on the wall it's three weeks later we carry it and then the first one hour my whole body is itching and i discovered oh i have descended if i can't do without my phone for one hour it means i was operating with the lower economy i didn't know it may take seven days before i conquer that part of me when i conquer it i will now cover some mileage in the spirit the next time i carry that phone that phone doesn't have the power to command my attention i should use the phone the phone shouldn't use me you can't see the power of your destiny except as you learn to build stamina i know there are many christians they can't even focus on anything for one hour even the internet they can't stay on one thing for one hour if they are reading something that is more than five pages five lines they dump it they can't read one page i'm telling you this is the generation we are in send somebody a letter he can't read it it's too it's too long a letter of 10 lines they can't even write good english anymore asap k <laughs> you now say write a formal letter he doesn't know what to write because he's used to k asap you is you because it's bcos is in a rush is a corruption of this age i'm not saying stop doing it that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying don't allow these things to build into you that you lose your life you should have control you should have command you should have authority and the way to do it is to consciously learn to build stamina if you build stamina you will start finding new things manifest through you. Bow your heads and pray. You reign, you ancient Zion skin, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you mighty on your throne. You know, most times when I pray, one gift I always ask God to give to our generation is the tenacity of the fathers, the stamina. Ah, this man. There are some men walking in our world today they read one book every week and they've kept that schedule for more than 20 years nothing can stop it no matter how busy they are even if they were to return home late at night they will sit down and read the chapter they can tell you how many books they read every year they are men today that this bible you have that you've never read they read it three times every year and they've kept that schedule for the past 10 years and then you see them making unimaginable impact you take this some people come and cut the button of a man of god and carry that body aggressively i say they've touched something button 
if it's about botting, he will, he will distribute it to all his children and keep some for his grandchildren. You have the Bible, you can't read it. This man, you are removing his body, reads the Bible four times in one year. You think it's about buttons. This man you are talking about, everybody he calls a mentor, he has read everything they wrote. He is more, his wisdom moving, wisdom personified. We need strength in the spirit so that we can bet things. There's no stamina. That's the greatest undoing of this generation. Can you pray and ask the Lord today to bless you with stamina? To bless you with tenacity? Even coming to church now, you have to persuade people. Because on Sunday, Sunday that comes, the three hour service that happens once every 168 hours. When that time comes, it becomes a body. You have to make church interesting for them to come. If church is not interesting, they is a body. Why didn't you come for service? I connected online. I mean, why this connected online? It's not for any legitimate reason. When they woke up, they didn't feel like standing up. Don't join a service online except as there is a legitimate reason why you shouldn't be present in person. It's a training to your spirit. It's a training. A lot of people love mysteries. When you show up like this, they want you to say a lot of mysteries. But these are the bedrocks of reality. Somebody will leave this conference and start reading one book every week. Instead of watching likes and comments on Facebook for six hours every day, you will sit on books. Somebody will leave this conference and start praying at least one every week. I read the story of Kenneth Copeland. They went for Kenneth Hagin's conference in 1981. And Kenneth Hagin said the Holy Ghost was leading him to tell somebody to begin to pray one hour every day. They were poor to the core. And they started praying. The little piece of land they had that they were planning on selling, the wife suddenly had a vision that they shouldn't sell the land. Months later, they discovered oil there. Today, they give out private jets like giving out a thousand naira. Some of the things that you make for your breakthrough, you sold it for one thousand. Because you don't have access to know that your life is in that thing. Some of the relationships you destroyed were the ladders to take you to the next level. But you couldn't see into the future. You have to sit there to see it. Somebody will leave this conference and start praying one hour every day. And somebody will leave this conference and be delivered from likes, pictures, and comments in Facebook. And convert that energy to something worthwhile. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance over you. And the Lord give you peace. May the Lord strengthen your spirit man to labor by grace on the Amen. things of your destiny. Amen. Paul said, by grace, I labor more than they all. May the grace to labor in the area of your destiny be released upon you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Capacity to stand. Amen. Receive it now. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is touched, it will be purged. When you come back, you can become a prophet.